This is Long Sands in York, Maine, one of the best breaks in New England. And this is me, a mass hole surfer. I was born in Maracaibo, Venezuela, a city with a warm climate, beautiful sunsets, and a lake with no waves. One day, I packed my bags and moved to Boston, Massachusetts, the capital of the beautiful country of New England, where I learned a lot about snow. The situation in Massachusetts is dire and dangerous. I also became a true mass hole, learning to love all four major American sports, Celtics basketball, Patriots football, Bruins hockey, and of course, Red Sox baseball. I met Surf Honey there as well. Don't look so sad, Swell. Tired of shoveling snow, one day I moved to LA. I purchased a brand new board, and after lots of waiting and multiple wipeouts, I finally caught my first wave and haven't stopped surfing ever since. Today I'm the typical Los Angeles surf dude and I spend most of my mornings here at beautiful El Porto Beach along with 200,000 other surfers. And every morning I jump in the water so I can ride some sweet Southern California waves. At least I tried. But regardless of how many waves I catch at Porto or how many places we visit and surf, at least once a month I drive to the worst airport in the country so I can catch a ride back home to New England and to its beautiful coastline. So what's so special about surfing in New England? Uh, it's not the waves, although the breaks in New England are surprisingly good and consistent. On a day-to-day -day basis, you probably get better waves in California, for example. Uh, nonetheless, New England as a surfing region is unique and special in many ways. Um, the beauty of the landscape you see from your surfboard, the quality of the air, uh, the way the light heats uh, the water during the summer and makes everything around you shine and shimmer. My favorite though is that surfing in New England still has an element of uh, being a pioneer. In California, everybody and their grandmother surfs. In New England, the crowds are still minimal. You have people looking at the surfers in the beach and asking, aren't they freezing? And some days you have miles and miles of beautiful waves and long lines breaking just for you. Or maybe you and two other guys. And um, it's very difficult to beat that. Less than 20 miles south of Boston, surfers brave the cold waters every fall for some of the best waves in New England. Today we start our morning like every mass hole surfer should, before we drive south to beautiful Nantasket Beach. There's no parking anywhere. We're a little bit late because Suellen didn't get up this morning. <laughs> so we're gonna have to pay a hefty fee of $20 uh, to park here.
after a day of fun lines and wipeouts, we cross the street for a well-deserved refreshment and a proper server's meal. Satisfied, we drive back to the city just in time for the evening game at Fenway Park, where we root for the Red Sox, like every mass hole surfer should. Today, I'm doing the shore drive north to the New Hampshire coastline. And my first stop is here. New Hampshire, the state owns liquor stores. So this is a perfect place to stop on your way to the beach and load up on booze for before or after your session. Mission accomplished. New Hampshire is not just great for liquor shopping. There is no sales tax in the state, so I do most of my board shopping here. Surfing chicks approaching. Ah, not bad, New Hampshire. This is the wall, the best known break in the state. And although the waves are not great today, there are plenty of rides to be had. back home. Long Sands, or as I like to call it, El Porto East, is the most consistent break in New England. It has a vibrant surfing culture and beautiful long lines of rights and lefts that you can ride pretty much all year long. And less than an hour and a half drive from Boston, it is New England's surfing paradise. here and little to none surfing etiquette so even your surf honey may drop in your way best waves of the weekend here in may Island today, uh, but it's hot and morale is low and swelling's really cranky. I got her some Dunkin' Donuts to see if she sweetens up, but it hasn't worked so far. It's a hot, humid summer day in Narragansett, Rhode Island, and before we hit the waves, we stop at the local surf shop for some last minute shopping. The beach is crowded and the waves are small, but we still manage to have plenty of fun and surf at one of the most consistent breaks in New England in the smallest state in the Union. And that's New England surfing for you. We did not include Connecticut because the water is flat there and there are too many Yankee and Giant fans for my taste. So what do I like best about surfing in New England? I like the fact that quite often the waves keep coming and not painfully one after another, but they just kind of, in a very nice pattern, come after each other. It's not like three waves and then you sit around for half an hour. It's here, uh, the season's fairly short and everyone's gonna go for whatever wave shows up. So, uh, you know, everyone can have a good time. <laughs> 